Hey guys, are you here? And today I have a 2v2 breakdown for you guys playing Discipline Priest, Frost Mage. Now I think Disc Mage is a good twos comp. I think Resto Druid Mage is a better twos comp. Um, the difference is Disc has a lot of extra damage, whereas Resto Druid has Cyclone, some more CC, and much higher HPS, and they're not going to go oom quite as fast. Um, so here, jumping in the game, we're going to be fighting Hunter Paladin. Um, in this game, and the next game we're going to watch, we're going to um, watch BM Hunter Paladin. And both of them are semi-difficult matchups, not crazy difficult. Um, there are harder matchups, like Feral Druid. Um, but I think Hunters, like especially BM Hunters, are very difficult for Frost Mages to deal with a lot of the time. Now, before I start this video, I am playing Ice Form since Frigid Grasp got buffed um today or yesterday um i am testing out ice form paired with frigid grasp to have a one minute intellect on use essentially um i don't quite know if i like it yet um two things to note i only have two of the frigid grasp talents not three um so that is making it feel a little bit weaker and i have to drop my as right gear significantly to try these frig frigid grasp talents for example my shoulders are 385 shoulders um normally and the frigid grasp shoulders i'm using are 340 so i'm dropping 45 item levels on my shoulders just to try it out so all in all it feels a little weak but i think those are the reasons why i think the spec in itself might actually be pretty good um but here we are playing my uh disc priest is just playing damage spec he's um spamming out smite spamming out solaces spamming out uh, defense dependencies a lot of the times um, and then spamming out those offensive dots as well. We start out with a full fear on the Paladin. I'm looking they get a Polymorph, some type of CC after that. It does not look like I get it um, quite yet at least. I pop the Ice Form to give me that Intellect. Uh, we pop Dark Archangel and the Sacrifice from the Paladin comes out. Um, my Priest is getting CC'd, so I'm just kind of line of siding, throw that Orb down for that slow, pop the Tem Shield. And it's very important, guys, to pop Tem Shield when your healer's in CC so that you can actually survive the go. Paladin does fate cast me there on the counterspell attempt, unfortunately. Um, and obviously that's not a good thing, but that happens, you know. Um, I could have maybe held my CS and let him fake himself quite a while. Priest is CC'd a little bit further, and I'm really trying to hold my block here because the Priest is out of CC, but it doesn't look like I can quite do it, so I do go into the ice block. And realistically, guys, I should have blocked sooner to not die without blocking, right? That was probably a little too greedy for me to even hold it that long. Um, just to put that out there. Going for the fear into the polymorph. Once again, we do land it. Um, the pet sack comes out from the hunter, and the trinket comes out from the pally. Um, so something to notice, guys, is every go we're getting some type of defensive. First go, we got sack. Second go, we got um, pally's trinket and hunter roar of sacrifice. In this next go, we might get um, there's another sack right there from the paladin. So we've gotten two sacks. Um, they probably wasted that second sack there. So that paladin, um, one little misplay that he could maybe work on is spacing out those defensives a little bit more um paladin still has that bubble um hunter still has that deterrence um hunter has faint death they have hunter as trinket there's a lot of different defensive cooldowns the enemy team is still working with that we have to rotate through um paladin gets full feared casting polymorph does get interrupted by hunter here i throw the ice form once again for that extra intellect dark archangel comes out by the way i look really cool we can just pause real quick and look at that okay the crows are in the way but look at that ice form it looks so cool it's like I don't even know. It's Ultra Instinct Czar right there. Looking beautiful. I love that Ice Form animation, but we polymorph the Paladin full, half, and then quarter. Trying to get to this Hunter. We do Nova the Hunter and Comet Storm and do force that deterrence or that turtle cooldown. So, Paladin still, I think, has Bubble. Um, Hunter has no turtle. Paladin, no trinket. A lot of defensive cooldowns out of the way here um, from the Paladin and the Hunter. Full Trap comes out throw that temp shield out right as soon as i see my priest in that trap and this is where i'm looking guys i'm looking right here at the party frames okay priest is cc'd in that trap boom pop this temp shield we're playing no voice games so i just have to be very aware with my own eyes and really look at what should i be using what shouldn't i be using um and all those types of things we sheep the paladin um full he has no trinket he souls that bubble and the sacrifice comes out and sacrifice guys makes it so the hunter takes 20 percent reduced damage and makes it so i cannot critically strike which is a lot um against a frost mage who um most of my damage is critical strikes paladin does bubble sack there in addition um and then i probably have to ice block so i actually want to point out a mistake that i did this game um and that is i didn't cold snap when i should have 
pretty much you should always cold snap right after you ice block. I didn't do that. And I got caught in a position where I was spamming block right about here. I hit block, but it was on cooldown. And I was like, I was confused. I was like, wait, why didn't I block? And then I was like, oh crap, I have to cold snap still. So I did cold snap and get the block. Once again, that's a mistake. I didn't get punished for it, but you want to always be aware of your mistakes. You can fix them in the future. So cold snap right after the first block is pretty much what you want to do almost every single time. Um, at least in an arena situation and duels you can maybe hold it to get that extra barrier cold snap barrier or combo with cold snap cone of cold stuff like that but in the grand scheme of things cold snapping in arena as soon as you can is pretty much the play get the full polymorph on the paladin and we force that trinket so now at this point in the game pally has no sacks no trinket no bubble get that full fear go in for another polymorph do land the polymorph casting another frost bill or two and the hunter goes down. So we rotated through all of the enemy's defensive cooldowns. Took a little bit of time, um, but we eventually did it. Here's the damage breakdown. My priest and I did the same damage, or he actually did 6,000 more damage. Um, so you might you might be scratching your head like, wait a minute, why is the healer doing more damage than you? That's just how it is. In priest mage twos, that's how it is. The mage goes for the a lot of CC with the polymorphs. The mage is kiting. The mage is providing the slows. Um, the mage is providing the burst, and the priest is providing the consistent pressure, the damage, and of course, the HPS as well through the atonement healing. So that's why the composition works, even if it's not crazy, crazy good, like uh, like Rest of True and Mage or some other compositions. It does work fairly well because of this reason. Priest gives the consistent pressure and the HPS. Mage gives the control, the burst, and um, a little bit of extra damage as well. And then kind of paired, brings it out a great composition. All right, guys, the second game on Tiger's Peak Arena. We're fighting Holy Paladin, and this time it's a BM Hunter. This matchup, I don't know if it's a little bit harder or a little bit easier. It's almost hard to tell sometimes, maybe depending on how the enemies play it. Paladin is playing Adaptation, and that's something you do want to keep an eye out for um, to make sure that you poly that off and then re-poly it. One more poly into a fear, but you you know, like the, the weakness of adaptation is you know when he's going to trink it. You know exactly when he's going to trink it because it's automatic on that first ability. So the weak, so you have to take advantage of the weakness of adaptation. The strength of it is it's a one minute cooldown instead of two minute cooldown on that trinket. So I have to basically um, know that and then use that as an advantage to CC the Paladin, right? Know he's going to trink it, not use too many offensive cooldowns because I know the trinket's coming. And then when I know he has no trinket, full polymorph him and use a ton of cooldowns because I know at this point now he has to bubble right um I don't think I mind the adaptation choice here coming out from the paladin the reason I don't think I mind it too much um is essentially because once they use hunter kick once they use the hunter stun silence hammer of justice line of sight and then I finally get that poly and then I have to go through all of those interrupts again to get another poly off the diminishing return the adaptation is almost back up so in a twos game, I actually don't know if I mind the adaptation pick that much. I actually think it's kind of smart from the enemy paladin. Um, something to note that I should have noted already, so I'm sorry that I haven't th thus far, I am playing the normal Icy Vein spec here that I talk about in the guides and all my previous videos. I'm not playing the Ice Form spec. And it, it, it feels similar just because my gearing for this spec is better. I'm running with my 385 shoulders. I'm running with uh, 355 chest instead of all this 340 gear. So I just have more intellect. I have more stamina and the traits are still pretty darn good. So it feels pretty good. Um, another note towards that, I am gonna be doing another update video on um, what I'm playing on my mage, kind of the meta, the meta game on mage currently, you know, what kind of spec I'm, I'm playing with, what kind of Azurite um, gear I'm playing with. And the reason I'm not doing a full guide yet is because the metagame is changing and shifting almost every single day at this point, right? I'm not just going to be like making a full guide once a week at this point, but I do want to do an update video where I kind of just sit you guys down and be like, all right, this week I've been playing with haste, versatility, mastery, crit as the damage breakdown. I'm playing with these Azerite traits. I'm playing these compositions and it's working out pretty well or it's not working out and I'm going to try this, this, and this this week, right? Um, because at this point in the metagame, guys, a lot of people don't realize no one has it all figured out yet, all right? Even the pros, even the top players, we're still kind of 
looking at what might become the best build, what might become the best trait. Oh, what if you stack this, this, and this and go this talent? Or what if you don't stack this, this, and this and then go this talent and, and you pick this instead? Like there's a lot of variations still underway, still testing it, still testing on different compositions, different metagames. So hold in there. All right. It's it, we're we're gonna come to a stable metagame at some point, maybe after a few weeks or a few months, and then I'll be making guides for each class once again. But right now is the fun part because we get to test all of the different traits and see what's really powerful. So that's what I'm currently doing. Um, back to this game though, Paladin has that adaptation back. Uh, they still have a little bit more defensive cooldowns. Sheep the Pally, get that add up. This 25 stacking um, debuff there on the Hunter is Battlefield Focus, and that's one of the traits I have been trying out. Um, myself and a basically every time you hit the hunter with a stack it'll take a stack off and do about I have two of the traits so it does about 1200 1300 damage to the hunter um, which kind of nice about that is if I pop comet storm that counts as seven attacks so it hits it off seven times so it does an extra seven or eight thousand damage to the hunter so that's actually pretty decent damage there and then every time orb ticks it procs it off as well boom 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 thousand thousand thousands a lot of damage I'm um, sheep the paladin full sheep the paladin a half trying to sheep the paladin quarter here looks like we get it comet storm ice nova coming down or comet storm uh, frost nova kona cold coming down and they actually overlap pet sack and turtle which is a little unfortunate on that overlap because the enemy team um, looked like to be in a pretty good spot but after that overlap it's really really hard to come back from because they really need all that they can get I want to highlight this play real quick as well when the paladin pops divine favor you can spell steal it it does not have a little glow because you don't actually get the buff yourself but you can indeed spell steal divine favor from the paladin so you can spell steal divine favor and then kick them divine favor is the ability that gives them that aura mastery right so if you spell steal kick then you can still kick them in the in the cast boom as you see there we spell still kick the paladin the plate in full speed he has the sack Boom, spell steal kick on the focus target. That would mean you would need a focus spell steal and a focus kick. Um, so you can focus spell steal, focus kick the paladin before that or mastery fast cast actually goes off. Um, I do get stunned. We're pushing back in. Pally has an adaptation, but he, uh, I don't know how many more cooldowns they have. He might have bubble too, but I don't know if he has any sacks, which is really the big cooldown we're trying to avoid here. Um, something to note if Hunter's running too much, and this is one of the, the, the hardest things about BM Hunters, if Hunter's running too much, we can also go Pally. Okay, if Pally's sitting in the middle, um, we, we don't want to just do nothing and just chase the Hunter and die. We want to hit the Pally. Um, another tip against BM Hunters, Sheep the Pet, right? The Pet is doing a large amount of damage. You have Diminishing Return on the Hunter if you need the Polyam, and you have Diminishing Return on the Pet if you need the Polyam. You can Nova the pet, you can go in and cold the pet, you can pet Nova the pet, and you can sheep the pet. Don't let that pet hit you at 100% uptime. Is essentially, think about it as like a feral druid hitting you the entire time, all right? That's what Soda Poppin says at least. So controlling that pet there. We get the fear on the adaptation. Um, Pally has no more adaptation, getting some more damage, rolling out on the hunter. Priest is playing Schism, tons of damage coming out. He's absolutely melting. Full sheep comes out on the Pally. I think, I don't know if Pally had bubble or not, but he didn't have a sack, and then down goes the hunter so we did end up taking him out um look at the damage breakdown guys this is exactly what i was talking about my damage once again was less than the priest and this is something that you're gonna see a lot all right so as the mage you know at least in a longer fight in a, in a short fight the mage will do more damage in a longer game the priest a lot of the time is going to do more overall damage and then the mage is going to obviously provide the control and the burst to actually land those kills um so this isn't super surprising. However, if you add up my damage and the priest damage, we actually out damage the hunter as a team. So we actually did more overall pressure and that's why we can come out ahead in a game like this. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you did not enjoy this video, it was boring, you didn't learn anything, thumbs it down, that's okay. Let me know in the comments what you guys wanna see for the next video. I'm definitely reading that. I wanna give you guys an update video like I talked about in this video about what I'm currently playing, so expect that coming soon. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.